bit of rock in it. Hi, I'm Daryl Penn. For the lads! Join me on a series of angling adventures across Europe in search of that big car buzz. That's not good. I am the Dominator. I have been sent here from 1982. How about that? For an epic 42 pound common. With a few laughs along the way. I think you call that fuck life. So Daryl, what is it you like about the river? But in all seriousness, we're here to catch carp. And big ones. Yeah, I got him. This is the big car pass. So yesterday, massive journey, 12 hours in the car, and as you can imagine, going that far didn't really feel like getting the rods out. And I suppose that was sort of helped by the fact that it was absolutely pissing down, you know, it was properly raining. I was tired from the early start. Um, we came and had a look at the river, and the first thing I do when I go to anywhere, I want to know where the fish can go and, and where the ends of that are, you know. I want to know what I'm dealing with. So you pull out the phone and you look at it, and it's, Oh yeah, it's, um, well, this bit's like 100 kilometres, maybe 60 metres wide, and then it's joining onto another river that's three times as wide, that's another 100 kilometres. So basically there's no way that I can walk up and down it and consume it, overwhelm it, you know, and, and yeah, just understand it in a very short session, you know. And luckily, uh, Max, one friend of our team anglers in Germany, has, has fished here a little bit. He's baited up some spots for us in advance, you know, not spots, basically he's picked three different areas and he's put 10 kilos in the three different areas that are probably 100 metres long, just scattered bait in the zone to, to stop any fish that might be in that area to give us half a chance, you know. I like to get out of my comfort zone, you know. In the UK, fish small lakes all of the time. Um, and to come here, it's just like, oh my God, you know, I, 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 I'm a little bit like, uh, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna do what they say and, and, and until I know different, then that's what I'm gonna do. So yeah, it's, it's big, it's vast, it's quite murky, you know, the chance of seeing any fish swimming by are, are quite unlikely, but we're told they're, they're really old fish. There's quite a few of them in here. It's got history, this area, he's caught them here himself, Max. So yeah, fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. So my first impression when uh, coming here was how far out in the sticks it is. It's very, I don't know, the, the foliage, the, the fields and that, it's very much like the UK, very similar, but it's, it's very untouched and it's just acres and acres of acres of, of farmland and just, I just can't imagine another angler walking past and going, hey, how you doing, you know? I just can't imagine that happen. So, yeah, it's very, I don't know, I just, I'm a bit blown away by it all. It's not what I'm used to fishing in the UK. I fished big waters on the continent a little bit, you know, but yeah, it's still very, it just makes your eyes go big like a cat when it sees a mouse and you're just like, wow, wow, like this is, yeah, this is exciting. Being like 100% honest, I've hardly done any river fishing. I've caught a handful of carp from the local river where I live in Chelmsford, um, and nothing over sort of 20 pounds. Um, and I fished, I don't know, once or twice. Well, I fished once on, in Austria on a sort of hydro dam sort of river thing. But yeah, I've got, I'm not, what well, I would certainly not say I'm uh, educated in river fishing. I've got no sort of ideas of, of how river fish move and why they do what they do, you know. It's, yeah, it's not something that I know, but it's exciting because of that.
Almost instantly, the left-hand rod was away and I was into my first German River Carp. I'd been told that the average size would be mid to high double, but this was certainly much bigger. The fish ploughed out to the centre of the river and started taking line. Can I jump across there? It's a landing then, quickly, please. The near margin was absolutely littered with lily pads, broken down rotten jetties, and it was absolutely essential that I got down there to get in control of this fish. How's about that for a first bite? 36 pounds of German River Mirror. Ancient, plenty of miles on his back. Obviously been here for absolutely years, swimming up and down this great big river. And uh, yeah, what, what a fish. I just can't believe it's happened so quickly. And uh, God knows what else is swimming out there and uh, what else is in store for us. But if it's anything like this, I just can't wait. believe what has just happened. You know, last night having come down in the rain and having a look and then knowing that there's not a lock for over 100 kilometres, it sort of fried my brain a little bit and I've come down here this morning knowing that I'm not going to be able to walk up and down the whole length, I'm not going to know where the fish are, I'm going to be fishing entirely off Max's information and his pre-baiting. Um, and, and you know you just look at a bit of river and it all looks the same more or less and I've rolled up to the swim I put out the first rod, put a few boilies around that. I put out the second rod, put a few boilies around that. And as I'm doing it, the first rod's had a take. Now, I've got to admit, when I picked into it, I was thinking probably going to be a small <laughs> fish. You know, I was told that the average size isn't that big. And the second I bent into it, I was like, that's really pulling back. And it's not like fast, it was just heavy. And it's big, long kite out into the middle and just thought, this is a decent fish. I've had to jump over the ditch to go sort of down after it to stop it getting into the lily pads. And yeah, an ancient 36 pound. I just, I can't, I can't believe it happened that quick. You know, 100 kilometres of canal and you catch one like that. But in all honesty, it is entirely down to Max prior knowledge and his pre-baiting, you know, his fish, his, his baiting and previous sort of knowledge of this area has put that fish in my landing net. You know, I've got no bones about saying that. And um, yeah, so it's a privilege to come down and, and, and catch that fish. In, in such short succession, you know. So, got the night to go. Well, God knows what else is going to turn up, you know. Anything, anything else like that will be absolutely amazing. The conditions at the moment are absolutely perfect, you know. This type of time of year, end of May, you get really hot weather, the fish can be spawning, and uh, that's not what we want, you know. We've got overcast skies at the moment, a big wind ripping. I've got to take. Oh, hang on, just trying to get in the trees. Well, just doing a little bit of chat to the camera and it's just absolutely ripped off. I don't think it's as big as the first one, the sheer speed of it. Um, but yeah, it's a, a wild, wild old fish. It's a little one, but what an absolute ripper. Here we go. 
Oh no, the landing net's caught. Oh, here we go. He's much smaller than the first one. A lovely little male. Really did pull at the start of the fight. Nowhere near as big as the first one, but God knows what the average stamp is around here. But a lovely fish all the same. There was clearly a few fish in the area and I needed to get another rig back on the spot. Using these high feeds white pop-ups in the murky water is doing the trick. And with the action coming this quick, who knows what will turn up next. I recast the rod and at the first time of asking it went right under the tree. I think you call that fug life. Having seen a couple of boats come down the centre of the river, I was concerned about my line and getting tangled in their propellers, so I decided to try and use back leads, and that didn't go exactly to plan. Oh no! That's not good. <laughs> well, I was trying to put a back lead on, I got another tape. Um, it's all kicked off, I haven't even set the landing it back up yet. It feels like I have a small one. Landing it. <laughs> nice one, Andy. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you. In there. <laughs> Crazy. Well, the second little one on the spin, absolute ripper while I was out there putting the back lid out. I uh, thought he was going to get in the snags, but he didn't. Lovely little fish, lovely coloration. Let's just hope the next one's a little bit bigger. So we're coming to the end of the first day in Germany and uh, obviously we got off to an absolute flyer this morning with that 36 pounder, um, really old fish, really pleased to catch that. Obviously there's probably quite a few fish in here, you know, to catch three in a day, obviously the pre-baiting and the, the location help from Max is, is massive, but I think there is a lot of fish in here and the chances of a, a real big one are probably, I don't know, slim, I think a, a 20 kilo fish from here would be an absolute mega, mega result and um, there's another bit of um, like a canal like a little bit further away from here where there's been some uh, bait going and uh, there's been fish to 28 kilos caught from there and as soon as I've heard that the more I've sat here and thought about it you know confidence is up I've caught I think I'm going to catch more today but I'm already thinking about the, the the bigger fish that could potentially be out there and obviously the adventure continues go somewhere new fresh freshen it up again and uh, yeah let's see what happens. Yeah. 
in that bush. If this isn't a better one, I don't know what the is going on. Proper pudding. That's a nice cart, mate. Half a tree with it. Here we go. German River 40. Unbelievable. 40 pounds of grey German River carp. Well, 41 pounds, should I say. Who would think they'd be swimming up and down here in these little rivers? It's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. To catch a River 40 from anywhere, you know, is a mega result. But from this region, you know, it's, it's a really big fish and a 40 pound river carp is not to be sniffed at. I'm, I'm over the moon um, and I could happily sit here for the whole duration of the session and, and catch, catch, you know, I'm sure there would be more fish to come. But knowing that there's another stretch that I've not even seen yet um, with bigger fish, you know, fish to 28 kilos that's been baited, I think the best course of action is to get some bait in this swim, get it out there let it do its thing, you know, the fish have been finding bait in this area. Go and check out the, the next section, see what happens, give it two nights there, whether we catch or we don't, we've got this to fall back on, you know. It's, I think with that amount of bait out there, fish already visiting, you know, it's a great plan. So that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna get to the next stretch and we'll see what happens. Tageskarte, Wochenkarte, Monatskarte. Mhm. Ja, Dann würden wir für beide Strecken jeweils eine Wochenkarte nehmen. Yeah. Für beide? Ja, ja, ja. Was wollt ihr fangen? There will be a bit of current. Das ist im ja, rein yeah. und raus. Ne? Mm. Aber da weiß ich, While my pal Andreas discussed the flow with the shop owner, I couldn't help but have a little snoop around the shop to see what they had. And I came across this rubberized priest thing. But on closer inspection, it was a lead head. You know, you know how they call it in German? No. Tiroler Hölzli. Hölzle? Hölzli? Richtig. Yes, I Tiroler Hölzle. I couldn't even begin to say that. Tiroler <laughs> Hölzle. <laughs> all funny business aside, it was time to get down to this canal and see what it was all about. Driving along, I was becoming more anxious by the second. What exactly had I got myself into? Was leaving the river a good choice? Or could this really be an absolute disaster? This canal clearly meant business. The sheer size of it was daunting. With huge shipping containers passing up and down, would I be able to hold bottom? Lots of questions raced through my mind. Had I possibly bitten off more than I could chew? Where on earth would I start? And more importantly, 
you know, remember to bring the beers. Because one thing's for sure, I was definitely going to need them. Well, I'm feeling a little bit like I've made a massive, massive misjudgment. I um, was having a really, really lovely time on the river, catching lots of fish, nice fish, in the middle of a farmer's field, in the middle of nowhere, soaking up the sun, just pressing repeat, you know, recasting, rebaiting, just everything was cushy and just lovely. You know, I was having an absolutely lovely time. But with success comes um, greed and uh, maybe my ego got a bit out of control and you see, the, see this monster canal and you hear that about 28 kilo fish and you think, God, yeah, I want a, I want a piece of that. And they came down, had a little look, and it was it was big. It reminded me a little bit of the um, the Albert Canal in Belgium. Uh, massive, massive barges going up and down, it, like even bigger than the Albert Canal, like massive container ships. Um, and we were told, even in the tackle shop, that the um, the flow was could be quite strong here. You know, I thought, yeah, I fished on the Albert Canal. I know what he means. A bit of suction created by the barges and that. So I've come around to me swim. Looks nice, got a nice overhanging bush on the far side. Leaded it, got it all clipped up, lovely gravel bottom, like bald, bald completely bald, just like, like ball bearings, just perfect. Got it clipped up, 13 and a half wraps, spommed out, 15, 20 spoms of um, tiger nuts. Cast out there. Just got the second rod in place. First rod's away, we've got a pound carp, you know, a carp this big. Look at it. You know, a tiny, tiny little carp. Um, but then there was a succession of, of barges that came through. I don't know how many it was, and I just couldn't hold bottom. I'm only fishing 13 rod lengths, 13 and a half rod lengths to the other side. And um, every single time one come past, the tip's pulling into lead, and then the bobbin would fall down once the, once the boat had finished going past. Um, and I'm, I don't know how many times I tried it. I must have recast six or seven times in the space of less than an hour, you know, less than an hour, maybe 40 minutes, half an hour, something like that. Um, and after all that effort of packing down from such a lovely situation and then getting here and going through the rigmaroles of getting cast out, you know, spawning loads of bait out and then all that recasting and I'm sitting there thinking now, what have I done? What have I done, you know, but that's carp fishing, you know, you have to, you have to sort of roll with what you think at the time. And I've come here to sort of have a look at it it is a beast, you know, massive, massive respect to anyone that, that catches fish from here, you know. I'm not saying it's ultra low stock and, and that, but I mean, it's just difficult to fish, you know. It's, um, because the situation, it's not normal, you know. It's almost, it's like sea fishing, you know, going down to South End Pier and wanging out some leads and hoping the carp's gonna come along. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. You never know. Waking the following morning, to be honest, my heart just wasn't in it anymore. There's definitely, definitely big carp here, but you know, there's lots of small ones too, and the boat traffic, for getting towed off my spots, it was just all too much. And that beautiful river was all pre-baited, the carp were there, and I was ready to get back to paradise.
Back in heaven. Nice spot this. Ages sort of getting the rods ready, tying the rigs, uh, make sure everything's nice and fresh, and um, wrapped it up. Pinged it out there just after the, uh, the music boat came past, and the guy pulled the Mooney, and uh, before I even got the second rod out. I was getting a bit worried as well. All that bait we put out yesterday, I reckon it was. It was minimum five kilo, maybe maybe six, six kilo boy. It was air dried and rock hard and I was getting a bit a bit worried that it was too much, but obviously not. We're back, and we're back in the good spot. Lovely. I've got a, a little rig there, I'm gonna chuck it out there, it's obviously if you're about. After waking up on the canal this morning, you know, I knew my heart wasn't really in it. There's no doubt there's definitely big fish there, but there's obviously a lot of really small ones as well. And uh, I was really keen to get back to the river. You know, the bait's been out there. I knew it had been working. I knew there was fish in the area. And uh, yeah, packed up, came here. Lovely summer's day, you know, everything just perfect. It was just, just a lovely, lovely day. Sun was out, wind was trickling along the river. I know where I'm gonna be casting. I know the bait's gone in the water. And I'm just thinking, I know what I've got to do here. So I put them around the sticks, first rod's gone out, second rod's gone around the sticks, literally just about to make the cast. And the first rod's gone. Had a small mirror, not a big fish, but good fight. After that, I had a bit, well, at the time I'm thinking, I've got an absolute monster on here, you know, I was playing it. And it was different to everything that I've played to so far, just much heavier, much slower and it went on for quite some time and I was saying, oh, this is, this is it. But it turned out to be the same 40 pounder but foul hooked in the tummy and that's why it felt so big. Um, other than that, a couple of losses which I can't really explain but we are fishing close to trees on the other side and having to pull a little bit harder than I'd like to be. Um, but just after them two losses, had a, a lovely common, just uh, black, you know, pretty rare for you. All the fish we've had so far have been mirrors. To catch a really nice old common, it's like a little cherry on the top so far. I really like that fish, one of my, my favourites so far. Um, since then, has gone a bit quiet, but we've had a, a bit of a barbecue, a bit of a social, a bit of noise. Um, it's not just that, you know, obviously the casting and the uh, playing the fish, you know, they've had a bit of a rest and now we've had a few takes. It's obviously um, shaken them up a little bit, but I've topped up the bait. If the night's quiet, which I think it might be, I've got a feeling the night's going to be quiet but I'm pretty sure tomorrow they'll be back and uh, yeah, we'll pick it up there. Just as I expected, as daylight hit, the carp came straight back on the bait. Get in there. Started the day with this lovely little mirror and the next thing I knew, I had more German fans than I thought. <laughs> For the lads! So Daryl, what is it you like about the river? <laughs> it's not a canal with big ships on it. Clearly buzzing to be back, I found it almost impossible to keep a rod in the water.
fish were getting bigger and bigger. That pre-baiting was definitely doing the job. And the next thing, my German fans come for another drive-by. Hey! Maniacs! Maniacs! Hey, watch this, lads. Rocking it. <laughs> These guys aren't right. Where's the fish? The takes were coming thick and fast. It was a case of wading through the small ones and waiting for the next big one. And this was that. What is this? Mate, he is absolutely flying. Mate. I'm going to have to go. Can um, one of you bring the net, please? Jesus. That's another good one, mate. Right, I need to go back. that bait we put in the other day, that six key. I wouldn't mind betting there's a lot of it out there. It's just the smell, it's just in the water. This carp was one of the biggest of the day, at just over 30 pounds, a real crusty old German river carp. However, moments later, the other rod was away and it felt like a really big fish. Unlike the previous big fish, this one headed upstream. It felt really heavy, potentially the biggest one yet, so I decided to follow up river after it. How's about that? 39 pounds of German Miracarp taken from a lovely river and the perfect way to end this German buzz piece. We started here originally on Max's pre-baiting and caught well from the off, an amazing 40 pounder. We then went off to the canal, you know, in search of bigger fish, but that's not what this buzz piece is about. It's not all about pounds and ounces. It's about catching lovely fish 
from lovely venues and this is exactly that. Good. Here he comes. Here we go. Up we come. He's in. There he goes. Not again, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Cheers guys. Yes, sir. It's a nice way oh, to yeah. end it. Yes, That's yeah, really good, good, really good ending. Did you learn anything uh, from this session? I don't pre-bait enough. <laughs> Not nearly enough. No, what have I, no, I haven't really learned anything. <laughs> Not anything at all. <laughs> what the f have I learned? Okay, um, I've learned that there's more carp in the German rivers than there are in the UK ones. Just think about it. Just... I don't f***ing learn anything. What have I done? <laughs> so I've got no idea. Um, what have I learned? No. I've, I'll tell you what I've learned. You ready? So what have I learned? Uh, you know, four nights on a German river. Not done much river fishing before. Well, I've learnt that the guys in uh, Germany have much more fun on Father's Day than we do back in the UK. They'll go out on boats, drink loads of lager, and rock the boat from side to side while shouting at all the anglers on the bank, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to celebrating Father's Day a bit more vigorously from now on. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs>